Hi friends, hope you are all doing well. So today I'm going to discuss lecture four in our aerospace engineering class and this is about the flow field. Now, the concept of flow field is very simple but very important in all aspects of fluid mechanics. So we're going to look at some of the things which we have already discussed until now, such as pressure, temperature, density, and so on. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, if we look at a typical point in a room, let's say here I have made a room which is in this green color and there is a point in this room and this room is full of air. Then what's going to happen is that at that point in the room in the air, there are going to be some specific quantities which are going to be associated with that point. So these are typically the four quantities which define the physical state of this point in air which is out there anywhere in space. And these points are pressure, density, temperature, and velocity. So you can contemplate that there is a point in the room which, in which you are sitting, and this point is certainly going to have a temperature. That's something for which we have a clear feeling. The velocity is also going to be there. If there is nothing in the room, then the velocity is going to be zero. However, if you have a fan or you have a air conditioner of some sort blowing air, or if you have a breeze coming in, then there's going to be a velocity of air at that point. There's of course going to be a density, which is associated with air because air is a fluid which has a specific value of density. And of course there is going to be a pressure because pressure of air is always present. So these four quantities are going to be associated to any point. And that is why sometimes these quantities are also known as point properties of air. Now, let's review some of the things which you may already know from physics, but it's a good idea to review them again. We know that pressure has units of Newton per meter square because essentially pressure is defined as dF by dA, which means that at a particular point, it is the derivative or the rate of change of the force with respect to the area and the density has units of kg per meter cube so for example at any given point that's going to be rho is dm by dv so we are going to use capital v for volume and small v for velocity and m of course is the mass so sometimes the unit of pressure is also known as pascal these are all in the si unit so People sometimes talk about Pascal, they talk about Mega Pascal, which is 10 to the power of 6 times Pascal, and sometimes even talk of Giga Pascal, which is 10 to the power of 9 times Pascal. But density is usually expressed in kg per meter cube because these numbers for density tend to come out quite well. We'll see later that the density of air is 1.225 kg per meter cube, or rather, I think I already discussed that in the video about the standard atmosphere which was lecture 3. However, the pressure typically is often very small value if you express it in pascals or newton per meter square. That's why sometimes people like to put a kilopascal or a megapascal or a gigapascal out there. Remember that kilo is 10 to the power 3, mega is 10 to the power 6 and giga is 10 to the power 9. So we are looking here at the large scale aspects of things. So now let's look at the important quantity of temperature, which we also saw is very important because of the standard atmosphere and the fact that temperature keeps varying with the altitude at which you are in. Now temperature is directly related to the molecular kinetic energy, which means that if you contemplate a situation, for example, again, let us look at air and the molecules in air are moving and therefore they are moving with a certain velocity and this velocity is going to lead to kinetic energy of this particular system or the air concern. Now the formula here for Ke is three by two K into T where K is the Boltzmann constant. It's a very small number, 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per Kelvin. Now do remember here that temperature should be always put in Kelvin. In fact, whenever you are dealing with equations in physics, you should always use the temperature in Kelvin. So this also applies to the equation of state, which was P is rho RT, always put T in K. 
Kelvin there. That's a beginner mistake for our students is that they sometimes put temperature in centigrade there. That's not correct. Also remember that at zero degree Kelvin, you are at negative 273.15 Celsius. So that's the value you can use. And of course, you realize that at zero degree Kelvin, the Ke would be zero. So that's the point at which essentially you come to what is known as the absolute zero or you come to a standstill as far as kinetic energy is concerned. Now, another thing you probably already know is that pressure, density, and temperature are all scalar quantities. That means whenever we talk about these quantities, one number is sufficient to define them in a given point or at a given point. However, V is a vector. That's the fourth quantity we are going to look at. And so that's going to have more than one value associated with it, or it can have more than one value with it. So what's the velocity? Again, let us contemplate this point here, which I have given in blue. And this point is somewhere in the air. And of course, this point is going to have a certain velocity, which is going to be linked with it. So again, velocity is at point property. It is a vector. And so it also has direction. Unit is meter per second. So essentially, if your velocity is only one dimensional, it's going to have only one component. But typically, if you are in three dimensional space, which is generally the case, we are going to have three components of velocity. So for example, if I consider a point in this coordinate system x, y, z, or z, then what's going to happen is that the velocity vector is going to be vx into i plus vy into j plus vz into k. Now here i, j, k are unit vectors which are along the directions of x, y, and z respectively or x, y, and z depending on which part of the Atlantic you are in. Now these values which are here vx, vy, vz, these are actually scalar values and so these are going to be numbers. Now in many cases which we are going to discuss in the course there is only going to be one dimension in terms of the flow. So in that case, we are simply going to use a particular value of here, V here. So it could be just Vx or something like that. But in general, you are going to have three different components for a typical velocity vector. Each of these is going to be expressed in meter per second. So what is the flow field? The flow field essentially means that if I have a certain coordinate system, then at every point in this coordinate system or whatever is defined within this coordinate system, I would like to know the density, pressure, temperature, and velocity distributions. So for example, in a very simple case, it could be that these uh, some of these quantities are simply constant. For example, temperature could be constant. And there could be some quantities which are varying, for example, velocity. So it's actually possible that many cases may happen. But in general, what happens is that there is a relationship between these quantities. So again, that's something to keep in mind is that these quantities cannot have independent random values which are going with them. There is going to be some variation in them. And so what's going to happen is that these quantities rho, p, t, and v are going to be linked by some mathematical equations. And these mathematical equations come about because there is some physics which is actually linking the problem. So the math is simply being used to represent that particular physical form. So equations relate these four quantities and solving these equations relates to calculation of these flow fields. Or if you solve this equation, you can evaluate this flow field. Now, flow field is important because it allows you to calculate aerodynamic loads. And you will see that as far as aerospace is concerned, a lot of importance is given to this load calculation because these loads are going to be needed for performance, which means to calculate the thrust and power of any flight vehicle. It's going to be related to flight mechanics, which means how this vehicle is going to fly in air. Is it going to be stable or not? And so on. And also, it's going to be related to structures, which means that is this vehicle going to withstand this kind of load or is it simply going to break up and destroy itself when the loads become very high? Now, that's not something you generally want. So let's keep that in mind also. 
loads are really important and so a lot of this work we do in terms of equations the end goal is to predict the aerodynamic loads so some of the basic equations here are going to be the equation of state now we have already met our friend the equation of state that relates p rho and t and if we look at two different points then we are going to look at the continuity equation which is velocity and density momentum equation p rho and velocity and bernoulli equation also p rho and velocity the difference being that momentum equation is expressed in a differential form whereas bernoulli equation can be expressed as an integrated form of the momentum equation so again these are some things which we are going to see in the next few lectures which are going to come up so i think now you are clear as to the importance of these particular quantities p rho t and v and you are going to keep seeing them repeatedly throughout this course so today's lecture was basically a very preliminary discussion but we tried to formalize some of these concepts that at any point in the fluid flow there are four basic quantities which are pressure density temperature and velocity and we need to find out some of these quantities and if we find out some of these quantities maybe through measurements then we can predict the remaining quantities often through calculation so that's something which is very useful and the aim of this entire exercise is to be able to calculate the aerodynamic loads which act on any flight vehicle because that helps us to figure out whether this vehicle is able to generate enough thrust for example to take off whether we have sufficient power which can be provided by the propulsion system and also whether it is a stable vehicle or not and whether the structure is going to be able to take on this load or whether it's going to simply destruct when in flight which is not something we would like to happen so because of this i would say the entire calculation of aerodynamic loads and also the aerodynamic flow field is a fundamental aspect as far as aerospace engineering is concerned so i'll end this lecture here and i will see you in a lecture soon see you then